Okay, let's talk about learning factoring in reverse. So what am I talking about here? Well, I'm going to give you um, a, a strategy to improve your factoring skills, okay? So, uh, of course, I'm using this word reverse. I could have used the word backwards. So what am I possibly talking about? Well, I'm going to explain this little uh, trick or technique, and it's really nothing... Um, you know, super mysterious, but it's an approach that you would want to take when you're, if you're learning factoring, okay? So, of course, you're learning polynomial factoring as an algebra uh, student typically and beyond, and factoring is one of these sore spots in mathematics that a lot of students struggle with initially. Some students continue to struggle with it because they don't practice it enough, and that's what I want to help you with is give you some um, kind of techniques to kind of mix up your practicing so you can really learn how to factor. You absolutely need to know how to factor polynomials. Just there's like 100% guarantee that if you do not know how to factor polynomials, you will hit a major uh, brick wall in your learning of uh, algebra and beyond. Okay. So IE, you need to master this. And the great news is that you can. Okay. And this video here is going to help you out. So we're going to get into this in just one second. But first, let me go and quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over many years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online video-based math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of it, uh, judge of that if you're interested. But um, I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But um, in my math help program, I have full comprehensive uh, math instruction, okay, on all the topics in middle and high school mathematics. And it's, this, these are videos that go far beyond what I do on YouTube, okay, very detailed, uh, deep learning in, uh, about particular topics. But more than that, I, have, uh, I teach you how to solve the most common middle and high school math problems. I literally solve thousands of problems. Okay, nothing's more frustrating than giving a bunch of problems and then just an answer key and not knowing how uh, the solution was derived. Okay, so as a math teacher, I understand that. That's why it's taken me many years to build my program. If you're interested, okay, whether you need to take a full math course, I, I offer full math courses, or you need assistance in a course that you're taking, my program can help you out. So you can check that out if you like by following the link in the description. Now, if you're watching this video, I assume you are a uh, math student, and that's excellent. So uh, I just want to stress to you, over decades of teaching math, one thing is apparent to me. Those students with the best math notes almost always have the best math grades, and the reverse is true. Those students who have no math notes, uh, sloppy math notes, inconsistent math notes, you get the picture, okay? Uh, typically will struggle in math, and then they go, hmm, why am I struggling in math? And then I'll say, let me take a look at your math notes. And then they'll be like, I don't have math notes. And then I'm like, yeah, I kind of get the picture, right? So m taking great math notes is critical. So take a look at your notes, ask yourself, you know, how are you, you know, how are you doing, okay? Can you improve? Uh, and almost all of us have room for improvement. Okay, so focus on your notes. But in the meantime, you need something to study from. So I actually offer detailed comprehensive notes. Those would include pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. You can find a link to those in the description of this video as well. Okay, so you got I have some stuff here written, and I want to go ahead and finish this problem as an illustration of this point. Okay, so the goal here is to get better at factoring. Uh, polynomials. Okay, but this can apply to just a broader topic of factoring. But uh, let's get into it and let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, so let's uh, take a look at this first problem I had. So we have x plus 1 times x minus 3. Okay, now if we do this multiplication, we, uh, you should know how to um, multiply this by using the FOIL technique, for example, or other techniques. So First off, if you're talking about factoring polynomials, we need to verify that you know how to multiply polynomials, okay? So if you can't multiply these two binomials, then you're going to struggle factoring polynomials. So as a prerequisite to factoring polynomials, you need to be an expert in multiplying polynomials. So let's go ahead and just check that you know how to multiply polynomials. So if you take a, a problem like this, let's just make something up. x plus 1 times x minus 3. We multiply x times x is x squared. Okay, I'm just doing a FOIL technique here. 
x times negative uh, 3, negative 3x, then 1 times x, 1x, and 1 times negative 3, negative 3, and then I add my like terms here. So we have x plus 1 times x minus 3 is 2x squared minus, uh, sorry, x squared minus 2x minus 3, okay? All right. Now, this is a beautiful thing, all right, because what I've done is I just made up two binomials. Now, of course, this is my problem, but you can make up any two simple uh, binomials, all right, and multiply them together, and you just made yourself a practice factoring problem because these guys here are the answer to the uh, problem factor x squared minus 2x minus 3. Okay, if I told you to factor this, guess what? I already have the answers, okay? So one great technique is to uh, create an, uh, a problem for yourself. Make anything up, okay? Be like, uh, I don't know, x minus 5 times x plus 7. These are the answers. You have the answers. Now multiply these guys together and come up with the problem. And then do this problem, okay? Factor the problem and get back to your answers because you already have the answer right here. And you could just do this. You're, it's a really great kind of exercise to um, you know, uh, practice your multiplication of um, polynomials or binomials and factoring. Okay, so, and you can identify different type of factoring situations. Now, this situation, and by the way, I don't want to turn this into a complete factoring video. You can check out some of my factoring videos in my uh, playlist and my algebra and Algebra 2 playlist on my channel. But here, if I want to factor this, of course, I already know the answers, okay? They're right here. This is what we call, a, I like to call this a case one or one X squared, okay? So when I have this, I can multiply one times this negative three. This is one technique that I teach. So this is negative three, and I can take a look at factors of negative three. So that's uh, one times, negative one times three, or positive one times negative three. And when I add up, these factors of negative three, okay, so negative three, I can write, uh, these are the factors of those numbers. So when I add up these individual little factors, negative one plus three is two, and one plus a negative three is negative two, I'm looking for this number, negative two. I'm looking for the pair of factors, okay, that add up to a negative two, and I found them, okay, it's right here, all right, one and negative three. So I know I'm going to have a binomial. It's going to be x and x, and inside that is going to be 1 and negative 3. So plus 1 and a minus 3, and there it is. There I kind of re-engineered the problem. I went from the problem right back to the factors, okay? So start with factors, okay? And, and if you're practicing the 1x squared case 1 um, uh, trinomial, for example, we're gonna, you're going to start off with a problem with an X and X or, you know, or a Y or Y, all right? So, again, this is an excellent technique to practice your factoring. Okay? You don't need to just, you know, look at some homework problems or practice exercises. Just make something up, you know, with a piece of scrap paper and then just, you know, do a bunch of problems. And, you will by multiplying and seeing the pattern in reverse, if you will, kind of will um, really strengthen your, your uh, multiplication and factoring skills. Remember... To factor, uh, even like a number like this, factor 38, all right, we need to, uh, this is this is the result of multiplication, right? So we're looking for factors, whatever they might be, it, we kind of have to think in reverse of multiplication, all right? So, you know, this is why multiplication and factoring are linked together. Let's take a look at another problem like this, okay? So this is a little bit more interesting. So make something up other than just x and x. We could put in 2x and 3x. So, it's maybe two, uh, so this is not a case one. So 2x plus 1, 3x minus 2. I know the answers. Here are the answers, okay? So let's create the problem, okay? And I'm going to try to create the problem and then factor the result of that problem and see if I can get back to this. So 2x um, plus 1 times 3x minus 2. When I do the FOIL technique here, I get uh, 6x squared minus 4x plus 3x minus 2. So here it is. So when I simplify all and combine all of my like terms, when I multiply 2x plus 1 times 3x minus 2, I get 6x squared minus x minus 2. So here's the problem. 
So my problem can be factor 6x squared minus x minus 2. All right, so I'm looking for my answers. What are my answers? Well, my answers are right here, okay? I already started off with the answers, so there's not going to be any, any mystery on this. Now, when you're factoring something like this, there's a couple different approaches you can take. So I'm going to show you another te common technique. I don't want to say it's called the guess and check, but what, what this approach is, we have our 6x squared. We need to have the factors of 6x squared in our um, these spots of the binomials. And we know this thing is going to uh, uh, factor into 2 if it is factorable. Okay. Now, of course, I could have just given you this problem. We don't even know if it's factorable or not. But, of course, we know that this is going to factor because here's our answer. So I got 6x squared. So I can um, write the factors of 6x squared, right? 6x squared I can write as 6x times x or 6x squared is the same thing as 3x times 2x, right? So these factors need to be in these first positions, 6x and x or 2x and 3x or 3x and 2x doesn't make a difference. Now I got two scenarios here because we're going to we're we're taking a look at the 6x squared where it's 6x and x. And now I have this here, this constant, and I have 2. Now I have a negative 2, but what, what I'm going to try to do, let's put a 2 here, and the factors of 2 are going to be 2 and 1, right? So we're 1 and 2. So I could put a 1 there and a 2 there. So this is going to be the factors of this number. Now we got to mess around with the signs because what what we're trying to, to get, we're trying to get to a negative 1 in a center. We're trying to get to a negative 1. Now, again, I'm kind of not trying to teach you how to factor this here, but let me just show you a little bit. I got other videos, much more detailed on, on factoring. But here I have 1x, so this is 1x, and 6x times 2 is 12x. If I add or subtract this, there's no way I'm going to get to a, a negative 1, right? Here I'm going to get 1 in other words, I'm adding these little terms. I call, it, I call this like the double smiley face. So 1x and 12x, that's 13x. Or if I took 1 from 12, that's 11x. Nah, I can't get to a 1. That's not going to work. So uh, I need to get to a 1. I'm trying to uh, make arrange these numbers such that I can get to a 1. So let's just put the 2 here and the 1 there. Let's see if I can get to that. I'm like, all right, this is 2x. That's a uh, 6x now. That's better. But here, I'm, this one give me like an 8x or a 4x, right? If I add or subtract, again, I can't get to a 1. So it doesn't look like this arrangement of these um, uh, numbers and variables are, are helping me out. But not to fear, okay? We still haven't tried our 2x and 3x, okay? So that's one combination. doesn't look like it's working. Let's go ahead and, and mess around with this. Let's put a 2 and a 1 here and do the same thing. So now I've got 6x and i got 2x. Nope, this isn't going to help me because uh, this is 8x or 4x. Again, I'm trying to get to 1. But what if I put the 2 in the other location? Okay, I put a 1 and 2 here. And I get 3x and 4x. Ooh, this is much more interesting. Now, this can give me a 7x, or if I subtract these here, I can get to a 1x. And that's what I need. I need to get a 1x here. Okay? So this looks good. All right. Now, what I need to do is get these signs correct. And now I know the answer. It's 2x plus 1 and 3x minus 2. But you don't know that answer, okay? You need to get a negative 1x. So this is what I'm talking about. Like, okay, I know the answer, but let me think about what the answer is telling me. I need to get a negative 1. So if I'm doing 2x times uh, 2, I'd like this to be like a negative 4x, and then a 1 times 3x, if that was positive and I added these up, that would give me a negative 1x. So the way to get a negative 4x here is to put this as a minus, and then, put, then I would have to have this as a positive, right? And so I'm like, oh, yes, this is my answer, okay? So this is how, you know, um, practicing factoring by creating your own problems really, really will help you out, okay? And factoring is, you know, it's a skill. It takes, it takes a lot of practice. So give yourself some problems. Start with the answer first, create a problem, and then re-engineer it, and kind of go through it. So um, 
If you need to know more, which you probably do, uh, about different factoring techniques, check out um, all my factoring videos, or many of them, on my algebra playlist. Okay. Again, my best help, my most uh, comprehensive instruction on all this is going to be with my math help program. I teach this extensively in my algebra courses. But um, anyways, okay, this is what I'm talking about, doing problems in reverse. This is an excellent approach, especially with factoring. It's a critical skill in algebra and beyond. You've got to know how to factor 100%. And uh, I, I would say a huge amount of problems that students face in uh, mathematics comes from their inability or their lack of mastery of factoring. They know how to factor okay or, or, or sometimes or easier problems, but that's not good enough. You got to know how to factor completely. And the way to do it is just to practice, practice, practice. Okay, so if this video entertained you or helped you in some way, please consider smashing that like button. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. Been on YouTube for a long time, already have hundreds and hundreds of videos. I love to teach math, as you can tell. So those videos are there to help you. They're organized in various playlists. But again, if you want my best work, just follow the links in the description of this video. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.